Good morning, viewers. You're watching Republic TV. My name is Priyanka Das, and welcome to today's segment of Quick Morning, where we delve into the latest news and updates from around the country and across the world to set the tone for your day. From tracking PM Modi's visit to Brazil to attend G20 summit to Bangladesh's interim leader Yunus seeking former PM Sheikh Hasina's extradition. Stay tuned as Republic TV brings you the ground realities of these developments. But that's not all. We'll also be bringing you the latest updates from the realms of business, sports, and entertainment in our jam-packed lineup for this morning. So let's kick start today's mega news day here on Republic, as always, with the nation first this quick morning. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will attend the 19th G20 summit in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil on November 18th and 19th. He will participate as a member of the G20 Troika alongside Brazilian President and South African President. The summit will bring together key global leaders including Chinese President Xi Jinping and US President Joe Biden, making it a significant gathering of world powers. In a statement ahead of the summit, Modi emphasized the importance of India's role in the G20. Highlighting that India's presidency last year successfully transformed the forum into a people's G20 and ensured that priorities of the global south were brought to the forefront of the international discussions. India's continued presence as a Troika member reflects its growing influence in shaping the future direction of the G20, a platform for the world's largest economies to address critical global challenges, including economic growth, climate change and international security. leaving no one behind but should also be forward looking in terms of technology must be forward looking in terms of uh, the advancement that is taking place in terms of artificial intelligence generative ai and also in terms of women led development which was a major contribution of the prime minister of india during india's presidency A joint security operation led by the 46 Rashtriya Rifles, 53 CRPF Battalion and a special operations group in Baramulla resulted in the arrest of a terror associate on Sunday. The operation took place at a mobile vehicle check post in the Baramulla district. The individual was detained during a routine bag search which led to the recovery of a significant weapons cache including an AK47 rifle, a magazine and 20 live rounds of ammunition. Authorities suspect the arrested individuals involvement in militant activities and are continuing to investigate the potential connections. Manipur remains tense as the Indian army conducted flag marches in several areas of Imphal on Sunday night. In response to the crisis, Union Home Minister Amit Shah held urgent meetings in New Delhi on Sunday. He cancelled a planned political tour to Maharashtra due to the ongoing situation in Manipur, where more violence had led to vandalism of an RSS Ran Skill Development Center. He will hold a detailed meeting over the issue tomorrow. The National People's Party withdrew its support for the N Biren Singh led NDA government with NPP National Vice President Y Joy Kumar stating that his party is open to working with a new chief minister or government. In a significant blow to the Aam Aadmi Party ahead of the Delhi Assembly elections, senior leader and transport minister Kailash Gehlot resigned from the party on Sunday. Gehlot cited that the party's focus had shifted from serving the people to prioritizing political ambitions. His resignation comes at a critical time as the party prepares for the Delhi Assembly elections scheduled for February next year. He criticized Kejriwal, pointing to certain controversies such as the Shish Mahal issue, which, according to Gehlot, raised doubts about whether the party still upheld its core principles of representing the common man. In response, our leader suggested that Gehlot's resignation was linked to an ongoing enforcement directorate investigation, implying that he had little choice but to align with the BJP. They dismissed his departure as part of a dirty political conspiracy orchestrated by the BJP. In a retort to our BJP national spokesperson Shahzad Poonawala accused the party of undergoing a political conversion transforming from a party for the common man into one of privilege and refer to it as Arvind Aam Aadmi Party instead of Aap To is siyasi dharmantaran ke chalte jab ye khas Arvind Party ban gayi Aam Aadmi Party se to ek ke baad ek unke sathi nirash hokar hatash hokar 
वो उनको छोड़ते जा रहे हैं और आज केवल कैलाश गहलोत ने नहीं इससे पहले कुमार विश्वास जी ने इससे पहले आपने देखा होगा कि फाउंडिंग कई मेंबर्स ने अन्ना हजारे ने प्रशांत भूषण शांति भूषण योगेंद्र यादव पत्रकार आशुतोष सभी ने छोड़ा बारी बारी The Supreme Court has agreed to urgently hear a plea on November 18th requesting the enforcement of measures to curb pollution in the national capital. After it was highlighted that Delhi should not become the most polluted city in the world, a bench of justices Abhay S Oka and Augustine George Massey consented to list the matter for hearing. Delhi ka Delhi ke sources 30% hain. 30% pe hum kaam kar rahe hain. हमने काम किया तभी तो हम सीएनजी बस चला रहे हैं हमने काम किया तभी तो 2000 इलेक्ट्रिक बस चला रहे हैं हमने काम किया तभी तो दिल्ली के सारे जो पोल्यूटेड इंडस्ट्रीज उसको हमने 100 परसेंट शिफ्ट कर दिया हम काम कर रहे हैं तभी तो 24 घंटे बिजली सप्लाई कर रहे हैं जनरेटर का धुआं कम कर रहे हैं Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath has urged the Congress party to acknowledge the historical suffering endured by Congress President Malikarjun Kharge's family at the hands of the Razakars in 1947. Speaking at a rally, Adityanath claimed that Kharge's village was set on fire by the Razakars and Kharge's mother, aunt and sister tragically lost their lives in the violence. He criticized Kharge for not addressing this painful chapter of history and called on him to clarify who the Nizam and the Razakars were. Adityanath's remarks have sparked controversy with some accusing him of politicizing the issue. While others argue that it's important to confront and acknowledge this painful period of India's past. The Razakars are notorious paramilitary group who responded to numerous brutal acts during the integration of Hyderabad into India. अलिकार्जुन खड़के जी का गांव बारावती गांव है बारावती गांव को उन्नीस में हैदराबाद के निजाम के रजाकारों ने जला दिया था खड़के जी की मां उनकी चाची उनकी बहन उसमें जल करके उटिंग <laughs> Authorities are investigating the cause of the explosion while local residents have raised concerns about safety protocols at commercial establishments. Emergency response teams and officials remain on site to assess the damage and prevent further incidents. Char thele pe cylinder blast hone ke karan yahan pe abhi 23 logon ko hospital mein jalne ke karan laya gaya hai jinka hamare emergency mein डॉक्टर्स की टीम द्वारा प्राथमिक उपचार देने के बाद उन सभी मरीजों को बॉर्ड में हमने शिफ्ट कर दिया है उनका हमारा जो भी डॉक्टर्स ने उपचार एडवाइज किया है उनको उपचार हमारी नर्सिंग स्टाफ और सभी डॉक्टर निरंतर उनको दे रहे हैं उपचार उनका जारी है We were tracking the top business stories for the day. We bring you the latest updates on India's economic landscape. From tracking India's FDA progress with UK and European Union to India's forex results hitting a 3 month low. Stay tuned as we delve into the key highlights shaping the business world today. A top government official said that negotiations for the proposed free trade agreements including those with the UK and European Union are progressing as per the schedule and the country's FTA are not paused. The official said that an impression going around that free trade agreements were paused which was not correct. In the coming weeks a bilateral meeting is scheduled between the Commerce Secretary and the Director General of the European Union to take stock of the negotiations for the proposed trade agreement with the European Union. India Tata Electronics has agreed to buy a majority stake in Taiwanese contract manufacturer Pegatron's only iPhone plant in India, forming a new joint venture that strengthens Tata's position as an Apple supplier. 
Under the deal announced internally last week, Tata will hold 60% and run daily operations under the joint venture, while Pegatron will hold the rest and provide technical support. According to data released by the RBI, India's foreign exchange reserves declined for the sixth consecutive week, reaching a near three-month low of $675.65 billion last week. The reserves dropped by $6.477 billion during the week, marking a total decline of $29.2 billion from the all-time high of $704.89 billion recorded in September. The largest component of the reserves, the foreign currency assets, fell by $4.467 billion to $585.383 billion. Vedanta Chairman Anil Agarwal said the metal and mining conglomerate looks to increase production across segments including crude oil and zinc. He also termed the closure of the Tuttukuran copper plant in Tamil Nadu as one of his smallest failures as a businessman. In the near future, Vedanta is aiming to double the production levels of its subsidiary Hindustan Zinc, increase oil production at the Cairn Oil and Gas to 3 lakh barrels of oil equivalent per day and increase the capacity at its aluminium smelter to 3 million tons per annum. According to a Bombay Stock Exchange filing by the Canara Bank, it has classified recounts of Reliance Communications and its subsidiary Reliance Telecom as fraud. Arcom, which is under corporate insolvency resolution process, said that the classification by Canara Bank is not expected to have any impact on the company. A filing by Arcom said that the company is undergoing corporate insolvency resolution process and Bankruptcy Code 2016. A resolution plan has been approved by the Committee of Creditors of the company in accordance with the code and is presently awaiting approval of the National Company Law Tribunal, Mumbai Bench. The Reliance Communications filing noted that credit facilities or loans referred to in the letter from Canada Bank pertain to the period prior to the CIRP and are required to be necessarily resolved as a part of a resolution plan or a liquidation as the case may be. Moving on to our international segment where we're tracking the ground pulse of some of the biggest global headlines. Today, we delve into significant developments from around the world. From Xi meeting Biden to discuss the key issues, Russia's fresh airstrike in Ukraine. Stay tuned as we unravel the latest updates shaping the global landscape. Thousands of protesters gathered in Slovakia's capital on Sunday, the 35th anniversary of the Velvet Revolution that brought an end to decades of communist rule in Czechoslovakia to oppose the policies of populist Prime Minister Robert Fico. The protests united the opposition, including the liberal progressive Slovakia, pro-business freedom and solidarity, and the conservative Christian Democrats, who all said Fico is a threat to democracy. Bangladesh's interim leader and Nobel Peace Laureate Mohammed Yunus said Sunday that his administration will seek the extradition of ousted Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina from India, where she's been in exile since fleeing a mass uprising in August. In a televised address to the nation on his first 100 days in office, Yunus said that the interim government will try those responsible, including Hasina, for hundreds of deaths during the student-led uprising that ended her 15-year rule. Yunus took the helm on August 8th, three days after Hasina fled the country. He said that not only the deaths in the uprising, but all other violations of human rights, including alleged enforced disappearances while Hasina was in power, would be investigated. Tropical storm Sarah caused widespread disruption across northern Honduras on Saturday as heavy rains and swollen rivers trapped residents and cut off entire communities. The storm, which made landfall late Thursday near the Honduras-Nicaragua border, stalled over the region, triggering life-threatening flash floods and mudslides. In San Pedro Sula, the storm washed away a river crossing, isolating a local community and leaving many stranded. Forecasters warned that the storm would continue to threaten the region with severe weather through the weekend. Voters in Senegal cast their ballots on Sunday in a parliamentary election that is set to determine whether the country's newly elected president can carry out ambitious reforms. More than 7 million registered voters in the West African country are choosing 165 lawmakers in the National Assembly. 
whether party or president Basiru Diome Fe currently does not hold a majority. Fe, who was elected in March on an anti-establishment platform, says that has blocked him from executing the reforms he pledged during his campaign. In September, Fe resolved the opposition-led parliament, paving the way for a snap legislative election. Chinese President Xi Jinping and US President Joe Biden held a key meeting on Saturday in Lima, Peru on the sidelines of the 31st APEC Economic Leaders' Meeting, where they discussed efforts to stabilize and enhance bilateral ties. Over the course of their talk, Xi and Biden reviewed progress in China-US relations, highlighting achievements in areas such as climate change, trade and military dialogue. Both leaders talked about the importance of maintaining open communication, managing competition responsibly and working together on global challenges like artificial intelligence and counter-narcotics. A shared commitment to avoiding conflict, reinstating the principles of mutual respect and peaceful coexistence while addressing key issues such as Taiwan cybersecurity and the South China Sea were also brought forth. Prominent Russian opposition figures, including Yulia Navalny, widow of the imprisoned critic Alexei Navalny and exiled activist Ilya Yashin, and Vladimir Kara Murza led a march of at least 1,000 people through central Berlin on Sunday, condemning the Russian President Vladimir Putin and his ongoing war in Ukraine. Carrying signs reading Putin, war and chanting Russia without Putin, the protesters demanded the immediate withdrawal of Russian troops from Ukraine, Putin's trial as a war criminal and the release of all political prisoners. The rally, which passed landmarks like the Brandenburg Gate and Checkpoint Charlie, was framed as a demonstration of unity by opposition leaders despite recent infighting within the anti-war movement. The World Food Programme has earned safe passage to food aid to Sudan's North Darfur and South Kordofan states, which are experiencing most fierce conflict, massive displacement and looming famine. For the first time in months, there are multiple WFP convoys of food aid heading to Zamzam in North Darfur, where famine was confirmed Sudan has been gripped by devastating conflict between the Sudanese armed forces and the rapid support forces since mid-April 2023. The government said on Wednesday that 28.9 million people in Sudan need humanitarian assistance due to the ongoing civil war. Among whom, 16.9 million are in need of life-saving humanitarian assistance, requiring about 840,000 metric tons of assistance in the next two months. One of us suffering and lost a couple of his family. Some of them are died, some of them till now they didn't found where is there. They didn't have something to eating or to drinking or to you know make their self healthy and whatsoever. This is a major problem that we are suffering in, a, in this camp. Russian missile and drone strikes hit Ukrainian cities on Sunday, causing widespread damage and civilian casualties. In Mykolaiv, two people were killed and seven others, including two children, were injured, as Russian forces launched a barrage that destroyed two houses and damaged several others, including a shopping mall and cars. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky reported that fire, Russia fired 120 missiles and 90 drones in what officials describe as the largest attack in recent months, targeting energy infrastructure across the country. Ukrainian air defenses shot down 140 incoming targets, but explosions were reported in cities nationwide, including Kyiv and Odessa. Coming up next, we have stories from the action-packed world of sports and entertainment. So sit back and we'll be right with you. So stay tuned. All right, viewers, it's time to dive into the world of sports with our segment dedicated to the all action-packed highlights and exciting matchups. Today, we bring you the latest updates from Border Gavaskar Trophy 2024-25 series in Perth, where Jaspreet Bumra is set to lead the side in Rohit Sharma's absence. Stay tuned as we unwrap many more stories from the Border Gavaskar Trophy 2024-25 series. Keep listening to All About right here on our sports segment. 
Current international selector and former PSR Akib Javed is likely to be appointed as the permanent head coach in white ball format before Pakistan visits Zimbabwe for ODI and T20 international series. Pakistan will travel to Zimbabwe between November 24th and December 5th for three ODIs and as many T20 internationals. A reliable source in the Pakistan cricket board said Javed, who was initially reluctant to take on the coaching assignment, had now been convinced by Chairman Mossi Nakhvi to handle the responsibility. Shreyas Iyer has been named captain of the 17-member Mumbai squad, which also features Prithvi Shaw for the Syed Mushtaq Ali Trophy, to be played from November 23rd to December 15th. The squad also features Ajinkya Rahane, who has been captaining Mumbai in the Ranji Trophy, with the first half of the competition ending recently. And the comeback batter Sidesh Lad, who has been among the runs. Ahead of the opening test between India and Australia for the Border Gavaskar Trophy 2024-25 series in Perth, Jaspreet Bumrah is set to lead the side in Rohit Sharma's absence. Rohit will join the team in Adelaide before the second test match, the pink ball test match after spending time with his newborn baby. India received a massive boost with KL Rahul recovering from his elbow injury after taking a blow during a practice game at the Waka ground. The head coach Gautam Gambhir had earlier indicated that Rahul would open the batting in Rohit's absence. Veteran pacer Mohammad Shami is set to feature in the upcoming Syed Mushtaq Ali Trophy 2024. The BCCI is not considering Shami for the opening few games of the Border Gavaskar Trophy after the latter made the headlines on his return to competitive cricket this week. The 34-year-old right-arm pacer took seven wickets in Bengal's recent Ranji Trophy match against Madhya Pradesh. However, it is not enough for BCCI to rush Shami to Australia as India is set to enter the five-match series with not experienced pace bowling attack. The Indian team management has reportedly decided to keep India A batter David Padikul in Australia as a backup option to the backing unit for the Border Gavaskar Trophy. The India A side is set to return home in the next few days, but the left-handed batter has been asked to remain in Australia ahead of the Perth test. Tracking the buzz, it's time to delve into the world of entertainment. Today, we bring you highlights from Box Office, where Prime Minister Narendra Modi praised recently released the Sabarmati report. History was made as an Indian filmmaker received the Grand Prix. This and more as we unravel all the latest updates from the entertainment industry this morning. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Sunday praised the recently released Vikrant Masi Stara, the Sabarmati Report, a movie based on the Godra train coach burning incident of 2002. He said it is good that the truth is coming out. The Prime Minister was replying to an ex-user who had praised the movie and tagged him with a video of the film's trailer. The movie was released on Friday. The movie is based on the burning of S6 coach of the Sabarmati Express near Godra station on February 27, 2002. At least 59 Hindu devotees returning from Ayodhya were burned to death in the incident, which led to the riots in the state later. PM Modi was the Chief Minister of Gujarat at the time of the tragic event. Cameron Diaz returns to acting for the first time in 10 years in the upcoming movie Back in Action. The film co-stars Jamie Foxx, who Diaz worked with on the Annie remake in 2014. The pair play former CIA agents who gave up their dangerous jobs to raise a family but get pulled back in. Back in Action premieres January 17th. A legal dispute has erupted between actors Nayantara and Thanush over a brief behind-the-scenes clip from the 2015 film Nanum Raudi Dhan, which appears in Nayantara's upcoming Netflix con documentary. Dhanush has filed a rupees 10 crore lawsuit claiming that the footage, which was not authorized for use, infringes on his copyright as the producer of the film. In response, Dhanush's lawyer has demanded the removal of the clip within 24 hours, threatening legal action against Nayantara and Netflix if the content is not taken down. The controversy sparked widespread debate on social media. 
Heavy Rasha fans at the grand trailer launch event of Aldo Arjun's Pushpa 2, The Road, at Gandhi Mehran in Bihar's Patna created a stampede-like situation. As they went uncontrollable to catch a glimpse of Aldo Arjun and Rashmika Mandana at the event. A significant number of people were seen climbing on structures, electric poles erected at the event site to, glimpse, to get a glimpse of their favourite stars. The security personnel deployed at the Gandhi Maidan were forced to use baton charge to control the massive crowd. And that's a wrap for today's segment of Quick Morning. Don't go anywhere, viewers, as we'll be right back tracking the top headlines and the biggest stories from across the world only on Republic TV. कांग्रेस 370 को पुनः लाना चाहती है। कौन बोले भाई कब बोले? अब फटे थे तो फटे थे। एक रहेंगे तो कटा काट कटा काट झारखंड की महिलाओं के बैंक अकाउंट के अंदर 2500 रुपए। दो ढाई साल में हम लोगों ने इतना काम किया है कि ये 20 सालों का भी एक भी काम ये नहीं गिरा सकते। तेईस तारीख को हेमंत सोरेन एंड कंपनी विदाई ले रही है